shit. Play and review this now. What? Why are you holding up three versions of your own game? I said, why could you talk? That's cool as hell. I said now. Okay, okay. Batman Arkham City, huh? Okay, well, I got nothing better to do. Batman Arkham City is officially 10 years old. The game after the game that launched the superhero genre into the mainstream. Batman Arkham City was a massive success, and one of the best sequels of all time. While its predecessor Arkham Asylum finally gave superhero fans a game that not only was faithful to the character, but actually fun after years of superhero games looking like this, Arkham Asylum was an amazing breath of fresh air. And Arkham City took that fresh air and somehow made it even fresher, improving everything to the point where its other two successors Arkham Origins and Arkham Knight really couldn't live up to the bar that Arkham City set. But that was 10 years ago, and nostalgia could be a hell of a drug, so let's go back and take a look at Batman Arkham City. So the first shot of this game is literally foreshadowing the last shot of the game, which isn't really important, but I just thought it was a really cool little easter egg. You start off with a bunch of Two-Faced goons arguing about some bullshit before Catwoman breaks in just to get captured by Two-Faced. I forgot that this is how the game started, and to be honest, I don't really like it. I mean, it's fine, it makes sense to start everything off this way to show off why Catwoman is in the predicament she's in when we see her. It's just not that good. And I always remember the scene after this one as the opening, with Bruce giving a speech before immediately getting bopped in the head and tortured by Hugo Strange. This should have been the opening, it is way better. And I love the one-on-one -on -one talk with Hugo Strange, doing a great job introducing him as the main villain, sort of, not really. But the game instantly gets your attention as Hugo Strange mentions something called Protocol 10, which gets teased every so often for the rest of the game, before Strange reveals that he somehow knows your identity. By the end of tonight, I will be a hero. Just like you, Batman. Now that's how you start a game. And the intro doesn't stop there as you walk through the gates of Arkham City, which does a great job introducing you to the world that this game is going to be set in. I really don't know how they did it, but they were able to top that great Arkham Asylum opening. I think I like this one just a little bit more. Just like how I like this game's combat just a little bit more. You're captured by the Penguin, and instead of pretending that you don't know how to fight, Bruce decides fuck it and breaks the Penguin's hand, beats the shit out of a bunch of goons in handcuffs, breaks the fuck out of his handcuffs, and does all Batman's signature moves. Go Bruce! Go! Fuck him up! I'm sure nobody's suspicious. But just for good measure... But that was just a little tease as you're properly introduced to the game's combat a little bit after this as you get your suit and go out to rescue Catwoman by fighting what looks like a hundred dudes. Never mind, they all ran away. Arkham City's combat is so amazing and it still holds up incredible to this day. Sure, Arkham Asylum was the originator and while I do love and respect Arkham Asylum for its innovative combat, even I have to admit that it could get pretty fucking clunky sometimes. Arkham City cleans the combat up while at the same time adding even more to the already amazing combat from Asylum. New free fire gadgets and even returning ones have been improved, like the quick fire battering is way better and faster compared to how it was in Arkham Asylum. The backclaw too, being able to rip weapons out of enemies hands or just drag them straight into a clothesline from hell. And then there's new weapons like the ice bomb or remote electrical charge. Being able to fucking freeze enemies or fucking electrocute them. Like making the hammer bro spin in circles knocking everyone out as he does so. Speaking of the hammer bro, he's one of many new enemy types. Well, technically he's a boss, but I don't care, he's used twice, so he's an enemy type now. Where Arkham Asylum had far too many titans, Arkham City only has two and a bunch more enemy types. You've got the previously mentioned hammer bro and sickle guy. There's dudes with knives where if you perfectly dodge their attacks, you can instantly knock them out. Armored guys where Batman breaks their entire ribcage before giving them a concussion. Guys with shields who always fuck up my combo. And tiger guards using shock batons. And Batman responds to that by breaking their tailbone. You've even got ninjas in Wonder City who can be really fucking annoying sometimes. And if all that wasn't enough, you can even get Batman to murder people. Okay, Bats, he's definitely dead. What do you have to say about yourself? I didn't kill him. He drowned. Anyways, back to the story. Catwoman almost gets her head blown off, but she doesn't. And then it's time for a detective section to figure out who shot the gun, which basically consists of looking over here, holding X, looking over there, holding X, and then following the trail that's left over. Yeah, the detective sections in this game haven't aged well at all. They're still just as boring as they were in Arkham Asylum. Arkham Origins and Knight both improved on these greatly, even if Batman's technology was... pushing it a bit.
I don't care how rich you are, this is not possible. Then we meet Harley and give her a quick miscarriage. Sorry about that positive pregnancy test, Harls. And onto the first predator section. Predator sections are improved in this game, but not as much as the base combat was. It's still a lot of fun, and they put you in some creative sequences, like the predator sections in Wonder Tower, having hardly any gargoyles to hide on. They do add some new things like goons using jammers, and that's it. But overall, these sections are just as fun as they were in the original, especially making goons terrified. Leave me alone, Batman. Please. But let's fast forward to Batman entering the Joker's base through a fucking furnace because he's fucking insane before getting into the first boss battle with Mr. Hammer. I mentioned earlier that he technically isn't a boss, but at the same time he technically is because the wiki says he is. As the enemy type, he's great at spicing things up. As a boss, he's pretty fucking garbage to be honest. It's basically just a normal fight but with this big asshole deciding to try to cave in your skull occasionally. Honestly, this boss actually makes this combat section way easier since you can just abuse it by making him hit his own teammates over and over again. But to take him out, all you need to do is hit him with your cape three times, and then punch him enough times before Batman finishes him off. Not the greatest starting boss, considering that Big Buff Dudes was basically three-fourths of Arkham Asylum's boss fight, and this is basically that, but changed slightly. But this boss fight being bad isn't that big of a deal, considering that it only gets better from here. Once you finally beat him, you could go up to the Joker's office where you can see that he's apparently dead. But Psyche, it was all a trick, and there's a second Joker who gives you some nice drugs before Harley knocks you out. And then, we wake up as Catwoman. So playing as Catwoman in the beginning wasn't a one-time thing. It actually happens multiple times throughout the game. She has her own mini campaign where she meets up with Batman at the end. And while I do like Catwoman and would be fine with playing as her, I don't like the way she's implemented. If Catwoman's campaign had a different section on the menu and you could just choose to play as her without interrupting the main story, that'd be great. But her campaign is just sprinkled in at the worst intervals. Batman gets captured and you're on the edge and want to know what happens? Play through Catwoman's mission first. Batman nearly dies, and I'll talk about that later. Play as Catwoman before finding out what happens to him. I'm sorry, I just don't like how it constantly cuts off what's happening in the main story. Dare I say, this is my biggest issue with Arkham City. I just want to play the main story. Why are they forcing you to play a side mission that I and I'm sure a lot of other people don't care about? Once you beat Catwoman's section, she gets captured by Poison Ivy just like Bats, and we cut back to Batman. Turns out the Joker has poisoned Batman by giving him some of his infected blood and the rest of Gotham. And now it's time for the hunt to find the cure before Batman dies. First step, find Mr. Freeze because apparently he was working on the cure. But when you find him, you discover that somehow Penguin has captured him. Where's Freeze? He's in the museum. Penguin's got him. So we have to take down the Penguin and get Mr. Freeze back. This takes like two hours. And honestly, I'm not complaining because the Penguin has so much shit up his sleeve that he honestly becomes a main villain. And he's so fucking annoying too that finally taking him down was so satisfying. But before we can get to the Penguin, we have to destroy three fucking jammers. Penguin must be using military grade communication disruptors. The only way to crack this security is to destroy them. Now, despite how much I love this game, it's obvious that this whole section was put in just to be a big ass roadblock to extend this game's length. Which honestly wasn't necessary at all, considering that this game's length is great with around 12 hours of main story content and 20 including side missions. I don't understand why this was added to the game. It's boring and only increases the game's length by like 15 minutes. But I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Like I said, it's only 15 minutes out of 12 hours. So it's really just a nitpick, but still a minor annoyance. So we finally make it into the museum. And like I said before, the penguin has so much shit up his sleeve. First, he's captured a bunch of police officers that you're gonna have to rescue. Then it's time to fight 500 goons. And then it's time for the second boss fight. This boss fight is even worse than the first. I mentioned earlier that the first boss fight, Mr. Hammer, was basically just a Titan boss fight from Arkham Asylum, but slightly altered. While this boss fight is the Titan boss fight from Arkham Asylum, and that's it. It's literally the same thing. I don't know why the fuck they were so lazy with the first two bosses, but hey, it only gets better from here. After that, you have a giant frozen pool of water that you're not allowed to sprint through, even though this guy was literally just sprinting through it. Alright, just gotta go through it. Jesus, and then the next boss fight. This is literally Mr. Hammer. I remember the bosses in this game getting better. When the fuck do they get better? It's the same fight. Both bald, both one-handed, both tall and buff. What, does one having a hammer and one having a sickle really make that big of a difference? Thankfully, it only gets better from here. And holy shit, it actually did get better. This is a massive step up. Finally, an actual fun and unique boss. It took long enough. 
He starts off relatively easy, doing attacks that are pretty easy to dodge, even if his AoE can catch you. But then he starts going ballistic on his second phase. More aggressive, his weak points are harder to hit, and they can even damage you, and he summons some weird-ass maggots. And just when you think you've beaten him, he rises from the dead and the final phase begins, which is pretty similar to the second phase, but with the attacks being altered slightly since now he's only using one hand instead of two. And after that, you rip off his ribcage and finish him off, before having the most satisfying beatdown in human history. So we've completed step one of finding Mr. Freeze, and he lets us know that he can't create the cure without some bullshit, I don't know, I'm not a scientist. So because he can't make the cure, it's time for step two, find Rej al Ghul. And thankfully one of Rage's assassins just so happens to be chilling right next to Mr. Freeze and Batman, and instead of trying to kill him, she runs away. So Batman chases her down throughout the city, Robin gets involved, fuck off Robin, even Batman doesn't love you. Now go. And we continue chasing her into Wonder City. So we made it, but we can't enter yet because we have to find the secret entrance by scanning these robots who have the worst memory in history. This is a similar situation to the antennas from earlier in the game, but it's not as bad here because this is at least a little bit more creative. For some reason, I always get lost trying to find the last one. I don't know why. It was right here the whole time. I hate my life. So we finally find the secret gate and enter Wonder City, but the disease starts affecting Batman and he collapses and starts hallucinating. Thankfully a kiss from his insane assassin girlfriend can save his life. Talia Al Ghul is introduced here who is Rage Al Ghul's daughter and Batman's girlfriend. Batman lies to her and pretends that he wants to join the League of Assassins to see her dad. But in order to join the League you have to complete a bunch of dangerous trials. These are all really easy. These are actually really cool sections. I just wish they lived up to how hard Talia was making them out to be. Thousands of warriors have fallen in pursuit of the demon. Would-be successors have proven to be nothing more than children battling the enormity of creation. I've seen worse. Nothing can prepare you for what comes next. Destiny will decide your fate. But once Batman completes the trials, he has to kill Rage and succeed him. And in regular Batman fashion, he refuses and it's time for a fucking awesome boss fight. With three different phases, my favorite of which by far being this one. Rage turns into a weird ass giant version of himself, and he throws so many fucking projectiles at you. And while I have mastered this fight with the amount of times I've done it, even I have to admit that the amount of shit he throws at you can get overwhelming. Especially later in the fight where he gets even more aggressive. But you've got two other phases where a bunch of sand ninjas appear out of nowhere and tackle Batman to the ground. But Batman being the badass that he is just fucking launches them all off of him. Giving you a big ass combo that you could use to fly around everywhere, fucking all the enemies up around you. Once you take down all the sand people, Raze appears in his regular form and launches at you in a badass final sequence. Sure, it's just spamming the counter button, but I still love seeing Batman block all of his swings before countering and beating the ever-loving shit out of him. While this boss battle really isn't that hard, it's still one of my favorites because of how fucking awesome the design and how flashy it all is. And beating the shit out of 100 ninjas with a 30 times combo definitely helps. But the hallucinogens wear off and Batman grabs Rage and takes his blood before fucking off to Mr. Freeze. If he could find his way out of the sewers. I don't know why I always get stuck here to the point where I accidentally found the Killer Croc easter egg when I was trying to get out of the subway to continue the story. Okay, so we finally made it out. Now it's time for step 3. Take the blood back to Mr. Freeze. Once you make it back to him, Mr. Freeze finds out that his wife has been taken by the Joker and decides to take his anger out on you. The clown has my wife. Bring her back to me. Ah! <clears throat> don't want to do this, Freeze. Oh, I believe I do. You will bring me Nora, or you will die. I'm not complaining though, because Joker taking her leads to one of the best boss fights in gaming. What can I say about this fight that hasn't already been said? Mr. Freeze is such a fucking amazing boss fight. It is literally the perfect Arkham boss, and still my favorite boss in this franchise to this day. Sorry, Deathstroke. It takes everything you've learned from the past two games and forces you to use it all. Every time you hit Freeze with an attack, he'll adapt and not let you take him down the same way. If you sneak up behind him, then he'll have fire coming off his back to stop you from doing that again. Attack him from the grates, he'll freeze the grates. Ledge takedown, he'll freeze the ledge. It forces you to think outside the box and try to remember what you've learned. Because if you make a mistake or if he stops you, he will shoot you for all of your health. 
And if you think that you could just hide, well, you're out of luck because he tracks your footsteps and will shoot out tracker balls to hone in on your location and then shoot a grenade at where he thinks you're going to be. Everything about this fight is perfect. It is like a massive puzzle that's trying to freeze you to death. And figuring out what to do and finally taking him down is so satisfying. Best boss fight in the series, I don't care what anyone says. But it turns out that while you and Mr. Freeze were having your boss fight, Harley Quinn snuck in and took the cure for herself before fucking off back to the steel mill. Which leads to this game's second to last act, as Batman breaks in through the back of the steel mill to confront Joker, who apparently has drank the cure and is fully healed of his disease. So you go through the steel mill with your ice grenades, beating up thugs as you do, before running into Harley Quinn who's tied up for some reason. Hey Harley, what do you have to say? And then the next boss battle, which isn't as good as Salmon or Ray's, and definitely not as good as Mr. Freeze, but it's still pretty fun. They make it seem like it's just gonna be Joker vs. Batman at first. Let's see how that goes. Please! Stop! I can't take anymore! You win! You beat me! Nice! Then it's time for the actual boss fight. Joker and his entire army. The Joker, Mr. Hammer, a Titan, four trains, and a hundred goons all fighting Batman creating one of the most chaotic boss fights I've ever played. It's chaotic in a good way though because there is so much shit happening. Even after all the times I've played this game, I still find this to be one of the most challenging fights in this game just because of how much shit you have to juggle. But it definitely helps that you could use Mr. Hammer to wipe people out or get on top of the Titan and make him smack everyone around. Just pure insane fun. Once you finally take them all down, Protocol 10 starts and Hugo Strange launches a missile onto the roof of the building, and it collapses on top of Batman. Lucky for Batman, or unlucky, I guess, Talia steps in and decides to save him by trying to sacrifice herself. And that's how things leave off, because now it's time for another Catwoman mission. So Catwoman's been hanging upside down here with Poison Ivy. What the fuck could they have been doing for the past seven hours? Who knows, probably talking about watering plants. You should have watered them. You said you would water them. She gets let go and sneaks into Hugo Strange's vault. And I kind of like this Predator section. So many of Catwoman's Predator sections just feel like they were set up for Batman. Because they probably are. So they don't work as well for Catwoman. But Batman never goes to this part of the map. So this entire area is set up for Catwoman. Which leads to a pretty good arena for her. You knock everyone out and you go on through the vault to get your briefcase full of gold. And the game actually gives you a really cool option. You can do it. Just walk right out of here and leave him. It's easy. You'll never forgive yourself, Selina. Save Batman, then get out of here. It's not like he'll die. It's Batman, right? Abandoning him gives you a seemingly bad ending where Batman dies and Joker takes over and kills everyone. before the game tells you to go fuck yourself and rewinds to give you another chance to be a good human being. So Catwoman goes and saves Batman and now it's time to stop Protocol 10. Protocol 10 is such an amazing section with helicopters flying all around Arkham City trying to murder all the inmates and the amazing menu music just blasting in the background. It's such an amazing moment. Too bad Batman's being a little simp and doesn't want to stop Protocol 10 and would rather save Talia. Which leads to one of Alfred's best moments. You need to think this through. Batman can't let all these people die. My tracker's not activating. Reroute all Wayne Tech satellites to boost the signal. I can't do that. I realize it is difficult, Sam. But you need to decide if one life is worth sacrificing to save a thousand. Don't do this, Alfred. Batman must save Gotham. I'm sorry, but deep down, you know I'm right. Your main objective during the first part of Protocol 10 is to find the Master Control Program on one of the helicopters. And if you get spotted, we'll get ready to run because these helicopters do not fucking let up and will just rain bullets down on you until you're either dead or you somehow lose them. Once you do finally find the Control Program, it's off to Wonder Tower to confront Hugo Strange, who has a bunch of guards waiting to stop you. This fight was pretty fun, even if it is just a bunch of guards. 
but this predator section is probably the most unique predator section in this game. I did mention it earlier, but I'm going to get more in depth here. You have very little gargoyles in this area. In fact, the only gargoyles you do have are outside of the area, which means that if you want to use them, you have to attract the guards out there with sonic battering. Or you can just sneak around from object to object and slowly take out all your enemies. It's a really cool and unique predator section that forces you to change it up because your regular gargoyle tactic won't work. Once you finally take them all down, you confront Hugo Strange, who gives a nice long speech about how you won't be able to stop him. You cannot stop me. Soon I will command forces beyond your comprehension. Before he immediately gets stopped by Rajal Ghul. Hugo Strange! Oh. Oh. Apparently, Rajal Ghul was somehow the mastermind behind Arkham City. It's a cool twist and all, but I'll be honest, for some reason I could never see Raze as the mastermind. I don't know why, he just really doesn't seem like the mastermind type. It's probably just me though. Anyway, Strange uses his final breaths to activate Protocol 11. Activate Protocol 11. What? What's Protocol 11? Get out of there! Uh, no, uh! So that's Protocol 11. He fucking blows Wonder Tower sky high. How the fuck did Ra survive that? Never mind. And finally, after all of that, we have stopped Protocol 10. And honestly, that would be a pretty good place to end the game. The two main villains have been killed, and their grand plan has been stopped. And that would be the case if it wasn't for the Joker. Yep, don't forget that the Joker has still taken Talia, and now it's time to go after her in one of my favorite final acts in any game. You've got all these snipers guarding the entrance, which looks really intimidating, but it's actually really easy. Once all the snipers are taken down, you can finally confront Joker. Hurry up and take your seat, Batman. The show's about to begin. Let's just talk about this. <laughs> now you want to talk. Too late, Batman. Give me the cure. But you've already got the cure. Talia, no! <laughs> so Talia fucking murders Joker. But psych, it was a trick and that was a fake Joker and the real Joker has been sick this whole time. In one of my favorite twists in any game, it turns out that Joker actually never drank the cure and has been sick this whole time. And the healthy Joker was being impersonated by Clayface. They had been teasing this for the entire game with Harley mentioning it in the way beginning, you literally seeing two Jokers in the beginning, Goon speculating about it, and the Joker having no bones during his boss fight in detective mode because it was Clayface. This blew my mind the first time I played it, and it's still one of my favorite twists of all time. And it helps that the boss fight with Clayface that precedes it is great with a pissed off Batman taking him on. The first phase is pretty fun and can get pretty hard at times because some of his attacks are hard to dodge, but make him roll into some dynamite and keep lobbing ice grenades at him and he'll go down no problem. But in the second phase, Batman gets his hands on a fucking sword and mows everyone down. I fucking love this part. Playing as Batman with the sword is so much fun. But the fun has to end as Batman leaps into Clayface and takes him down from the inside, finally getting his hands on the cure. Quick! Cure. What are you waiting for? Come on! I killed your girlfriend. Poison Gotham in hell. <laughs> it's not even breakfast. <laughs> but so what? We all know you'll save me. Every decision you've ever made ends with death and misery. People die. I stop you. You'll just break out and do it again. <laughs> Think of it as a running gun. Ah! No! Are you happy now? Do you want to know something funny? Even after everything you've done, I would have saved you. <laughs> that actually is pretty funny. Now that's how you do an ending.
killing off Joker has to be one of the most brave Batman endings ever. I fucking loved it, and nobody was expecting it. And it instantly made everyone interested in where they were going to take the story moving forward. And where they took the story, well, it was... Uh, but if you thought the game was done there, you're dead wrong because you've got a fuck ton of side missions introduced for the first time. Arkham Asylum was great and all, but after the main story there really wasn't anything to do other than collecting all of Riddler's trophies. But here you've got a whole host of side missions to do, including the Riddler. F Let's start with the Riddler since he's the longest and most annoying side mission. So early in the game Riddler captures a bunch of police officers and forces Batman to save them all. How does he do that? By making you pick up every single one of his shitty trophies. Some of these are relatively easy, like looking up and using your back claw. Others are so goddamn annoying that I'd rather do anything else with my life. You have everything in that tool belt. Why the fuck do you not have any fence cutters? Once you do collect enough of his trophies and get the chance to save a hostage, it's actually pretty fun. Solving his little puzzles actually makes you think outside the box, except for when he's cheating. Overall, it's a good side mission and definitely adds a lot of playtime if you're going for 100%. And while I have gotten all the Riddler trophies before, I'll admit, I didn't have the fucking willpower to get them all over again. The next side mission we have is Bane, who suddenly wants you to help him destroy all the Titan that he's fucking addicted to. This is a trap. There are 12 containers in total, 6 for you, 6 for him. These Titan containers are scattered around all over the map, and you can destroy them by spraying them with a little bit of explosive gel. Once you destroy all of them, you can then go back to Bane, who tries to kill you. Now, do me a favor, and die! Knew it. But Batman instantly traps him in a cage that he somehow can't break out of. This side mission wasn't anything special. Alright, let me just grab- Holy shit! Next up we've got Asriel, who's just sitting around watching you do shit, and speaking very cryptically while he does so. You have to find him four times, once in each district, and scan every symbol that he leaves behind. Once you scan all four symbols, it'll tell you to meet him in the church, where he'll say some more cryptic things, and actually predicts a lot of the events that'll happen in Arkham Knight, where he'll play a slightly more important role. This mission also wasn't anything special, but I kinda liked it, cause the foreshadowing to Arkham Knight was pretty cool. Then there's Zaz, the creepy bald guy that you make light work of in Arkham Asylum. Here he plays a more important role, getting a whole side mission to himself. And you know what? It's actually pretty good. Random phones will be ringing throughout the city, and catching one of them will let you talk to Zaz, who tells you that he has two hostages and will kill them unless you're able to catch another phone across the city. These time sections could actually be pretty hard and intense, unless you have the grapnel boost, which makes them piss easy. After you catch the second phone in time, you'll begin telling you the story of his first kill. And instead of listening to that story, Batman decides to track down where he is. Eventually, once you find his location, you can hang up mid-call, cause I'm sure that won't piss the psychopath off, and then you can go to his base where you'll sneak around doing a little bit of parkour while trying not to get spotted by him. And then once you reach him... An overall fun and unique side mission, and it continues with the identity thief. People are getting murdered in random alleyways throughout the city, and Batman is trying to find the killer, who everyone is saying is Bruce Wayne. You won't believe me, but, well, he looked like Bruce Wayne. What? I know. Someone must have got to him. He was covered in cuts and bruises, but I'm sure it was him. The poor guy must have had a target the size of Gotham City painted on him. Looked like he'd been attacked by pretty much everyone in Arkham. This is instantly intriguing, and finally figuring it out by scanning all three victims for clues is really cool. Leading you to the apartment of the killer Dr. Thomas Elliot, who has a bone to pick with Bruce Wayne. So in order to do that, he kills those people and makes himself look like Bruce Wayne. An awesome side mission that's continued in the worst fucking way possible in Arkham Knight. This was really disappointing, just like this boss battle. Deadshot, who has all of a sudden become one of DC's favorite villains after the Suicide Squad movie and the upcoming game. But before all that, Deadshot was here, with his own side mission that's pretty good. Hugo Strange has given Deadshot a list of people to kill, from political prisoners, to Jack Ryder, to Bruce Wayne, and finally to Batman. Even though Strange knows that Bruce Wayne and Batman are the same person. The fact that Deadshot is a target on Bruce's head is even teased in the beginning of the game. Bruce Wayne. Face face. You're on my list. Come on! Smash him in the face! Bam. I really like this side mission, seeing the first victim get shot right in front of you, which is dumb of Deadshot cause Batman is standing right there, hearing Deadshot's bullets echoing through the air as another victim gets taken down, and finally catching his location by finding a secret stash that shows off all of his targets and their location. Like Jack Ryder who's going to get killed by him in 2 minutes unless Batman gets there in time. You made me miss my target Batman! After you save Jack, the boss battle starts which consists of hiding till he turns around, walking to a piece of cover, 
and hiding till he turns around. A great side mission ruined by a shitty boss battle, which is a shame because I really like Deadshot and I'm curious to see what they'll do with him in the new game, if it's even the same person. Then the final actual good side mission, before we move on to frustrating and boring, the Mad Hatter's mission. Halfway through the game, Alfred lets you know that they've somehow developed a cure out of nowhere, and when you take that cure, you pass the fuck out. You wake up in a creepy dinner table with a bunch of hypnotized goons wearing bunny masks and the Mad Hatter sitting across from you, who tries to hypnotize you, but Batman is somehow so mentally strong that he fights the drugging and proceeds to beat the living shit out of everyone in that room, including the Mad Hatter. This side mission is really just fighting a bunch of enemies, but its design is really cool. Fighting on a clock that's infinitely falling down a pit with everyone wearing bunny masks, including Batman wearing this terrifying thing. Sure, it's short, but its design saves it and makes it really cool. Unlike the next mission. After the best boss battle in the franchise, Mr. Freeze will ask you to save Nora, and Batman promises that he will, and you know what that means, another side mission. This one is basically just a room full of dudes, like the Mad Hatter fight, but in that one, the aesthetic was really cool, in this one, it's a room full of guys. You take them all down and go back to Mr. Freeze and tell him that she's safe, and that's it, that's really lame. And we continue with the lame as we do another one of Mr. Freeze's side missions, trying to recover some of his lost gadgets. This side mission starts after Harley can't keep her mouth shut and tells you exactly where the stolen equipment is. And basically this side mission consists of going down an elevator puzzle, fighting guys, getting the equipment, and that's it. Really lame, but the next mission's even worse because it's literally just going back to the museum halfway through the game, picking up a gadget, and that's it. No enemies, no nothing. Enter, take it, leave, that's it. And finally we have the Acts of Violence side mission, which is just stopping a bunch of assholes from abusing crybaby politicians. Wow, those last three side missions were really bad, but at least we're done there. Augmented reality training activated. F fuck this fucking garbage ass mission. I mean, it's not that bad, but fuck it. It's actually a fine side mission, and you get a pretty cool upgrade. The grapnel boost, which launches you into the air after grappling. I just suck at it, and that's why I hate it. The first few challenges are very easy, and they drop you the grapnel boost, and you think you're done. You think that, but you're wrong. Because after getting the grapnel boost, you've now opened up four more AR challenges that go from piss easy to frustratingly hard. Having to dive bomb and pick yourself up at the last possible moment without going too high or too low is not fun. It is not fun. Fuck this side mission. Fuck it so hard. And that's actually all the side missions, and I really like their inclusion. Sure, they're not all amazing, but there are a lot of great ones. And they add even more things to do in this game. But if you finish the main game and all the side missions and want some more things to do, you've got Predator and Combat Challenges, which start off easy and get fucking frustrating. Fuck all of these, I don't want your three stars, go fuck yourself. Overall, Arkham City is still an amazing game, and still my favorite superhero game of all time. Spider-Man came close but it couldn't beat Arkham City. And while it is a little rougher on the edges compared to Arkham Knight, it still holds up incredibly well. There. I reviewed the game. Batman? Where are you? Oh, it is I, the mighty Bat Gentleman, and not the feeble Batman thou speak of. Thou hast turned well in reviewing the great Arkham City, yet there is still much work to be completed. Review all Batman games that hast been released. Spare all good games, yet banish all terrible games to the Shadow Realm, to forbear an old friend, worse than thou can ever imagine. Every Batman game? That's insane, there's like a hundred! Silence. I shan't hear any backtalk. Review all games, and that is all, this is not a crave, it is a decree. Looks like I'm going to have to play a lot more of these games.